Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, let's try that again. Good afternoon. Uh, is it evening already? I guess it is. All right. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you to all of you for coming out today. Um, my name is uh, Steve Tharp. I am the director of music here at Uniontown United Methodist Church. Methodist Church. I will work on saying my church name here. Um, we have a very talented musician here tonight, and, and I want to thank um, Nancy Peterson, from, uh, who is the principal harpist of the Canton Symphony Orchestra, for being here tonight. So, thank you for being here. As I mentioned, uh, Nancy is the principal harpist of the Canton Symphony Orchestra, uh, which, with which she has also appeared as a soloist. Uh, she has performed as a soloist and chamber musician in New York, Texas, and Michigan. As an orchestral musician, she has played for the Cleveland Orchestra, the Blossom Festival Orchestra, the Akron Symphony, the Pittsburgh Opera, and the Youngstown Symphony as well as the American Institute of Musical Studies in Graz, Austria. Ms. Peterson received a Bachelor of Music degree in Harp Performance from Kent State University and has also studied with Alice Chalifo, oh, Chalifu, at the Salzedo School in Camden, Maine. We really appreciate everyone attending uh, tonight's concert. It's certainly going to be a very enjoyable evening. I do want to take the time to say thank you to a couple people who have helped me in putting this together. Um, so with that, we had a number of sponsors for our event tonight, and so I want to thank the following people. And if you, you came in uh, after the printing of this program, which was last night, I apologize if your name is not on here. We will have you on for the next one. But um, thank you to Jan and Amy Goddard, Harold and Peggy Boer. We had an anonymous donation. Um, Alan and Sarah Berkey, Net Massage Solutions. Jackie Lee, another anonymous donation. Roy Alexander, Ed and Susan Stanford. Jack Stanford, Terry Gin Advertising. Judy Tweedy, Gay Barnett, and Cheryl Moreau. Thank you very much to our, our patrons. We really, really appreciate this because without you, we couldn't be here tonight. And so with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Nancy Peterson.
I thought I would talk a little bit about the harp, since not too many people get to hear one in concert or uh, in person, and people know very little about the harp. Uh, the harp is one of the oldest musical instruments in the world. The earliest harps were developed from the hunting bow, and wall paintings on Egyptian tombs dating from 3000 BC show an instrument that closely resembles the hunter's bow. Of course, the harp has gone through hundreds of years of evolution to arrive at its present form. This is a concert pedal harp. This is the kind of harp that you will see in an orchestra. It's about six feet tall. It is made of maple wood with a spruce soundboard. The harp is made of three structural components, the column, the neck, and the sound box. The harp is, uh, there are 40, oh, the harp weighs about 85 pounds. There are 47 strings and they are made of wire wound steel in the base, gut in the middle octave, and I have nylon on the top. And when I say gut, yes, we're talking about animal intestines. Okay. <laughs> but we like the sound of our gut strings. They're made in England. They produce a beautiful sound. So um, they keep making those, those gut strings. The strings are arranged diatonically like the white keys of a piano, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. And they are color-coded. The Cs are red and the Fs are black and the rest are white. All harps have this color coding. There are seven pedals at the base of the, the instrument and each pedal corresponds to one of those seven tones. Through the use of the pedals, we can alter the pitch of every string from flat to natural to sharp because there are three pedal positions, flat, natural, and sharp. So not only do you use both your hands, you use both your feet to play the harp. Anytime, you can, you can set the harp in whatever key you're going to start off in and then as, as the piece uh, modulates, you're moving those pedals around. So how do I move the harp? I, uh, I have a cover which I put on it and I have a nice dolly with wheels and I roll it out to my SUV which I have the back seats folded down and I just, I just lay it in there and it lays on its side. Um, I had a van um, for several years and when my van died, I went car shopping about four years ago. I took my harp to all the car dealerships <laughs> <laughs> until I found just the right fit and that is a Kia Sorento. <laughs> The next two sets of pieces on the program were written by harpists. Harpists and composers Marcel Grangeny and Carlos Salzedo had a lot in common. Both were born in France at around the same time, and both studied at the Paris Conservatory with the same teacher. Both came to the United States to teach and perform. Grangeny headed the harp departments at both Juilliard and the Manhattan School of Music. Salzedo founded the harp department at the Curtis Institute of Music and also the Salzedo School in Camden, Maine, which is a summer camp for harp instruction. Both performed, taught, and composed extensively and worked tirelessly to promote the instrument. With his compositions, Salzedo was more the innovator, developing new techniques and notations for those techniques to create new tone colors and textures on the harp. He is widely credited for establishing the harp as a significant instrument of the 20th century. Salzado worked with the harp makers Lyon and Healy in Chicago to produce a Salzado model harp, which you see here. It was designed in the 1930s and the Salzado harp embodied Salzado's vision of the harp in the 20th century.
Claude Debussy, the great Impressionist composer, used harp extensively in his orchestral masterpieces, Afternoon of a Fawn, La Mer, The Nocturnes, but he did not write any pieces for solo harp. He did feature harp in two chamber music compositions, The Dances Sacred and Profane for Harp and String Orchestra, and the Sonata for Flute, Viola, and Harp, but no solo harp pieces. He did, however, write some wonderful pieces for piano, which translate beautifully to the harp. And here is one of my favorites.
The love theme from Scheherazade was arranged by harpist Robert Maxwell. After learning about the history of Robert Maxwell and his family, I decided that their story was much more interesting than talking about the piece that I'm going to play. Robert Maxwell, real name Max Rosen, was born in New York City, the third son of a Russian emigre mother. This woman had an overpowering dream that her sons would become professional musicians and focused her every effort on the realization of this desire. A piano was rented and lessons were begun. At this point, it is a moot question whether the brothers might have gone on to successful careers as musicians, but as luck or destiny provided the happy realization of their mother's dream. The brothers were attending the Paul Hoffman Junior High School in New York City. By sheer coincidence, the New York Philharmonic Scholarship Committee chose, chose this school to begin a 20-lesson pi pilot class in harp. At the end of the lessons, a competition was to be held, and the winner was to receive a harp scholarship to study with a member of the New York Philharmonic. All three brothers won the competition in turn and were each awarded full scholarships at Juilliard to study with the famous Marcel Grangeny. Abe Rosen went on to become principal harpist with the Minneapolis Symphony, followed by the CBS Symphony, and finally years of Broadway shows. Meyer Rosen played with the New York Philharmonic. Max Rosen, or Robert Maxwell, became the youngest member of the National Symphony Orchestra at age 17. He eventually moved to Los Angeles, appearing on radio, television, movies, and transitioning into a more popular music context. He became an arranger and a composer, and his best-known compositions are Ebb Tide and Shangri-La. Thank you. 
Stephen Foster was America's first professional songwriter. Although he never made much money from his songs, historians credit him with pretty much inventing the American pop song. This was pre-Civil War, an age of total confusion when it comes to music publishing and copyright and fair use, so there was no tradition and legal precedent for how royalties from songwriting alone would be made. ASCAP, the American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers, was not formed until nearly 50 years after Foster died, prompted in part by the legend of his struggle and his death at age 37 with only a few cents in his pocket. For someone who was born in Pennsylvania and never resided in the South and had only traveled once south of the Mason-Dixon line, many of his songs spoke nostalgically of the South, way down upon the Suwannee River from the old folks at home, my old Kentucky home, and I've come from Alabama with a banjo on my knee from O Susanna, though he never saw Kentucky, Alabama, or the Suwannee River. Included in that Southern nostalgia came some pretty offensive lyrics. Uh, this was pre-Civil War, pre-abolition, so much of Foster's music is out of fashion and out of favor. But I think Stephen Foster should be remembered for his struggle to make songwriting a viable profession and simply for the beauty of his music. These pieces are arranged in the very old-fashioned style, which I think suits the music, and I hope you enjoy it.
People often ask me, what made you choose the harp? When I was a child, we had a piano in the house, and my older sister was taking lessons. I started piano lessons at age 12 and continued all through high school. When I started college at Kent State, I wanted to be a music major, but not on piano. I wasn't that good, and uh, there were lots of piano students. So I entered as an undeclared major. It just happened that during my freshman year, there was a Marx Brothers revival, and they were showing their movies on campus. Well, I went, and there was Harpo playing the harp. Wow. <laughs> I had never seen a harp before, had no notions of the harp whatsoever. It was love at first sight. That is what I wanted to do and who I wanted to be. I found out that there was a harp teacher at Kent State and took a beginning harp class. One of the other students in that class was Frank Volz. Frank grew up in Stowe and entered KSU as a piano major. I got my degree in harp performance and Frank got his degree in piano performance, but he continued playing the harp and has written many compositions and arrangements for the instrument. Here are two of my favorite hymn arrangements by Frank Volz.
All right. What a joy. I couldn't, have, I couldn't have said it better. What a joy. Thank you very much, Nancy, for being here tonight. And, and honestly, I mean, uh, when we first started this, um, this journey, which was many, many months ago, um, I really didn't know what kind of uh, showing we were going to have or who was going to be a part of this. And honestly, I knew that uh, what, I, what I wanted to do was expose folks to a variety of different kinds of music that people just normally wouldn't hear. And so I hope that tonight you'll walk away thinking I was blessed tonight. And, uh, and so uh, Nancy's wonderful playing. I, I, this is the first time I've heard solo harp in performance. So I think, uh, I think uh, she sold the instrument to me. Uh, so um, I do want to, to say just a couple things. First and foremost, I want to say thank you to all of you for showing up tonight. This is important, not only just for, for the concert series, but for, you know, performers and, and musicians, you know, they, they want to know that, hey, you know, you're coming out and you're supporting them and you're also walking away uh, feeling like, you know, you got something from it. So I hope that you, you, you do. I want to say thank you to um, Pastor Amy and Reverend Amy uh, for, uh, for their support and as well as the, the council of this church who has supported us uh, tonight. And, um, and especially Lydia and Don Baker, um, who have organized a nice little treat for you afterwards. So I want to invite all of you to stay afterwards for some light refreshments and some snacks. And it'll give you an opportunity to talk to our guest of honor tonight. Uh, so again, thank you, Nancy, for all that, you, uh, that you've done tonight. And thank you all. Um, if we can have a, one more round of applause for Nancy. At this time, we'll go and grab some snacks. Thank you very much. And anyone is welcome to come up and look at the heart, too. Yeah. Any more questions? Or... Oh. Yeah. I do want to make one quick announcement. Um, our next concert.